So today we will be uh, dealing with after the time of trouble or during the time of trouble in Daniel chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 we will be looking at the second coming of Jesus. Now, that's what we're looking at today. The second coming of Jesus. Uh, we will involve also the, the signs of Jesus coming like the fig tree. Yeah, all right, let's start. Let's bow heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you again. Thank you, Lord, for the time that we can come together. And as we open the pages of the Bible, we would like to open first our hearts with you so that we can understand, we'll be inspired, and we know which time we are in. And the work of preparation will be now, Lord, our priority. Forgive us from all our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in the time of trouble, there would be a massive deception that will take place. Now, two major events, two major deceptions that we will be keeping an eye on. This is this is this would be the the almost the it's not yet the crowning act, but this is the the most dramatic event that can happen in the world before the coming of Jesus. Number one is the immortality of the soul. Is that a correct spelling? Yeah. Yes. Immortality of soul. And number two is the spiritualism. Now, this is very important because especially with the subject of the immortality of the soul meaning the soul will not die the body will not die so there are many i would say ideologists or many ideas out there that when the person die the person did not actually die it's just moving from one to the other they're still mucking around. Lingering. They're still lingering around. Yes. Yeah, they're still coming around. Yeah. They don't yeah, they don't actually die. And in fact, we we in, in the Philippines we celebrate the November one and two and we bring food into the cemetery, hoping that the dead will eat the food that we offer. Yeah. So these are the these are the events that are happening uh, around. Also during the during the death, the, de the death and dying, the dying and the death stage, there are many uh, people, including ourselves sometimes, um, we believe that in the death and dying process, uh, we still like to, to do the best we can that on the death, uh, bef before that death, we, we have a, a very clear, clear conscience. You know, and even during funeral service, we still hallow the the, the, the corpse, the, the dead body, as the center of the attraction. That should not be the case. You know, a funeral, the dead body should be on the side. The center will be the Bible and the speaker. But mostly, when you had a funeral service is the dead in the middle of the service becomes the, the very center of the attraction. That should not be the case. Because we know from the Bible that the dead, dead is dead. That's what it should be thinking. The dead must be dead. The dead must not be wandering around. Because this teaching of the immortality of the soul begins at the Garden of Eden that you will not surely die this is what satan told eve you will not surely die even if you're dead you are not surely die you will not surely die so this immortality of the soul teaching preparing the mind of the people that one day your dead loved ones will come to you this is the deception before Jesus come. Our dead loved ones will come to you and will tell you to obey the climate change. 
your dead loved ones will tell you to obey and to follow the Sunday law because this is a God-given gift to humanity also the second one will kick in as well spiritualism also will take place when spiritualism will take place mingled with the immortality of the soul Satan will appear himself as the angel of light and Satan is the last act of the drama all right this is this is the last act of the drama when it is last means nothing else this is the very last and after this Jesus will come so when Satan will appear in the midst of the air I am Christ I am Jesus I am coming now I am come now to tell you when this is happening immortality of the soul and the spiritualism these two teachings Satan in his over masterly delusive activity will take in place and will deceive many and will deceive many including Seventh-day Adventists today there are many Seventh-day Adventists cannot see any wrongdoing with the climate change so let's go in our Bible John chapter 14 verses 1 2 and 3 see in verse 1 Jesus said it straightforward he said let not your hearts be troubled you see in the time of trouble all of us will be in trouble you know why because the work of preparation is not yet done there is a work of preparation to do and that work of preparation must be done now yeah work of preparation Pre work of preparation is not a preparation where you have to stock 50 kilos of rice every day yeah it's not a preparation where you have to buy from not quite right tons of canned foods and take it store under your house that is not the work of preparation the work of preparation is to restore in man uh, to restore in man uh, God's lost image to restore man the image of God something like that sorry sorry I will I will I will, I will change this one uh, to restore in man uh, sorry God's image all right that is the work of preparation the work of preparation is to restore in man God's lost image so we lost that image of God at the Garden of Eden so now we had to work in verse 2 it says in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go and prepare so this preparation Jesus doing this is what we have discussed before this preparation of Jesus is also our preparation I go and prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare for you I will come again and receive you so to receive God to Jesus to receive us in his prepared place his people also are prepared to get in into that place now the question asked why Jesus has to come Eh? why why Jesus has to come yeah, to, to receive us 
into his place yeah into his place to receive us into his place um, so there is this essential preparation that we need to have so that when he comes that when he comes ready and fit in into that new place remember what he's preparing is a mansion yeah living a two double story house living a double story house sometimes it's fun when you're young but as you grow old going up and going down every time you forgot your glasses upstairs you're gonna crawl imagine Jesus is preparing a mansion how many levels will be the mansions there that God is prepared now if you're not if you're not fit into this new place that God prepared you're gonna say ah oh, I don't like I better go back I don't like this place why am why I am here for isn't it so that place that Jesus prepared so this is the question that only a Bible student can understand about the teachings of the second coming of Jesus and to challenge each one of us especially our viewers guaranteed that there's no other denominations that teaches really the doctrine of the second coming of Jesus because before they will touch the subject of Jesus coming they will teach first the subject of secret rapture so while talking about the rapture the second coming is gone they don't want to talk about the second coming I asked a few of theologians of different persuasion what is your teaching about the teachings of Jesus about the second coming because there is a preparation that needs to be taught and that preparation is to restore in man the image of God see to restore in man the image of God that's a that is the that is the that is the situation what we are in now is the preparation of restoration and to restore the image of God in man begins at home begins at home it does not start in the church so when we restore the image of God in man that restoration is when you become a student of the Bible and when you become a student of the Bible you will start you will start studying about Jesus second coming and how to restore the lost image of God so here in verse 3 and if I go and prepare a place for you guaranteed I will come again so when that place is ready he said I will come again and I will receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also and whither I go ye know and the way you know okay so in verse 4 very important that we should know the words whither I go that wherever I go you know ye know you know now question do we know where Jesus is now in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary now not many people knows about this because they think Jesus be somewhere in heaven but shouldn't be the case there should be a particular place where Jesus is because the Bible say that in verse 4 that where I go you know 
and the way remember the way I am the way the truth and the life what way that Jesus is talking about here the way is the sanctuary so when we talk about way this is about the sanctuary because it says here we should know we should know we know now this knowledge is not intellectual knowledge this is not the know that yeah I know um, I know the address uh, I know the place this is not the intellectual knowledge this this know in the Bible this is not the know about intellectual knowledge so the know in the Bible is that when Adam knew his wife he conceived a son yeah when Adam knew Eve Eve becomes pregnant that is the kind of a no this is the kind of a no we know you know the way no means when I know my wife she gets pregnant and we've got a daughter that's the knowledge that's no no is that when Adam knew his wife Eve conceive a son so when we know the Bible we will conceive is not only on the intellect but it will conceive in us and it will give birth and when you give birth because you know Jesus and you give birth that giving of birth is a new creation you no longer the same because you are now a new creation so you know so this is the no this is what um, Jesus said in verse 4 and whither I go you know because not only that you have intellectually know because you heard me preaching because you see me healing but it's now in you that's why there was this called the in theology I am in you and you are in me in the book of John that's why the book of John is a pastoral letter because they, this is John saying about the in theology abide in me I am in you and you are with me you are in me and I am in you so this is the in together this is the work of preparation this is the work of preparation when there is the in Jesus with you when, when we are when we abide with Jesus now you become one flesh when you become a new creation the image of God sorry sorry to restore the image of God in man Or I will do this one not this one not this one all right so this is the to restore the image of God in man right, so this is the work of preparation so the work of preparation is you and I individually not as a family not a husband and wife I'm sorry the Bible say that salvation is personal and it's individual not as a group not as a family 
individually. I cannot piggyback my son, my daughter, my wife, no. It's individually. We have to restore. We have to work together with God to restore in man the image of God. <coughs> to restore the image of God in man. This is our work of preparation. So let's go to the parables of the fig tree. So this is the background. This is the background. Let's look at it to the parables of the fig tree. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I think let's go in Verse 32. But let's go first with this 31 or 30 or 31. So here, immediately after the tribulation, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. The moon shall not give her light, give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So you have the Lisbon. When was the Lisbon earthquake? 19. All right, it's in 18, just before 1844 or 1850. Uh, let's let's Google it. Let's Google the uh, Lisbon earthquake. And you got the solar and the lunar eclipse just after run about in the 17th century. 17, yeah, 1755 with the, uh, was that the, uh, the earthquakes? So that's the Lisbon earthquake. 1755. Yeah? November 1st, 1755. 1755, yeah, November of 1755. So that's where, that's where the earthquake of the Lisbon. Now you've got also in 1833 is the earthquake, uh, is the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. So it says the Bible is very clear that immediately after the tribulation, so this tribulation ended in 1798. This tribulation ended in 1798. This is the tribulation of the 1,260 years. Immediately after that 1,260 years of the papal supremacy, and in the days the sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and then the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then, after that, and then it says in 30, and then appears the sign of man the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and there shall say a man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory so right after this tribulation after the tribulation there will be a sign of the appearance of the son of man from from heaven and the tribes of the earth will mourn so we are awaiting for this sign the, the Son of Man will come and the tribes of the earth will mourn and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Remember there were two resurrections? There was the first resurrection, the second resurrection. But in the first resurrection, it's not the general resurrection, but there would be a special resurrection that they will see the Son of Man. But when they see the Son of Man, they will mourn. This coming, the tribes of the earth that mourns, this is not the sign for the faithful. This is the sign for the wicked. This is the sign for the wicked. The tribes of the earth will mourn because we will not be crying when Jesus comes. We are happy and joyful that finally we are waiting for so long. But this sign will appear. This sign of the Son of Man coming in heaven is 
a special resurrection to those who pierced him, those who persecuted him, those who suffer the proclamation of the third angel's message. They will mourn. When they see Jesus coming, specially resurrected people, Caiaphas the high priests, maybe Nero, maybe Domitian, maybe Napoleon, maybe Hitler. What? These are the, the, the people who really persecuted maybe Pharaoh, maybe King Nebuchadnezzar, all of these who are responsible in persecuting Jesus and his disciples and his followers and his people. <coughs> they are called the tribes of the earth. But they will see him coming. And when we see him coming, they will mourn for the actions that they have taken. And verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Now, after their mourning, when they, after their mourning, there will be a trumpet sound. <clears throat> And in this trumpet sound, the dead in Christ will rise first. And God will gather together all his elect people from the four corners of the earth, from one end of the heaven to the other. But here in verse 32, we have to learn from a parable of the fig tree. Now, I have planted fig tree in my backyard. Still, still small, but a few fruits coming out now. So let's look at what, how did Jesus explain the parable of the fig tree? Now learn in verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So a fig tree is a deciduous tree. On winter time, it will drop all its leaves. It's just a naked tree during winter time. Now, springtime, when the, when the sun begins to heat, then the fig tree starts to shoot its leaves. Leaves first, no fruits. And when the leaves is out, when it's fully open, the leaves, slowly the fruits comes to come out. Uh, unlike other fruit trees that they will flower first and out of that flower is the fruit the figs is different the fig will come out first the leaf open and then will follow the fruit the fruit will follow there's no flowers on the fig tree fig tree will not flowers shoot and then open the leaf open and then follows the fruit now, let's listen to what Jesus said about the fig tree. When you know what, that the branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know the summer is nigh, is close. What is the summer? Now, not in Australia, but back in uh, mi uh, Middle East they had a very long summer even though they have spring uh, summer fall and winter they also have a two seasons of dry and wet season and on the summer season, their summer is long. They get a long summer. It will move a bit longer. The sub-Mediterranean, I think, kind of a summer. Now, we know that the summer is long because the summer that Jesus is referring to is the summer harvest. This summer, you know that the summer is nigh 
because you know that on the summer you have a harvest there are two harvests on the summer in the time of Jesus even today the first harvest is the harvest of the barley that's on the early summer so at the beginning of the summer they will have the harvest <clears throat> and then at the very end of a long summer that long summer is needed for the next harvest which is the wheat harvest so that this long heat the long summer heat will make the wheat golden brown not greeny but golden brown when it is golden brown ready for the harvest but to make that wheat golden brown it really needs a long summer heat so Jesus is using the fig tree because the fig tree is a longer fruit tree that goes right through at the end of the summer harvest and the figs is ready for the harvest also the fig tree is a symbol of the nation Israel this is their national tree a fig tree so we can see we can see that after the tribulation uh, the, during during the tribulation that uh, during the during the tribulation Jesus said let not your heart be troubled because it's going to be a long summer it's going to be a long summer heat will not be very pleasant so now we're just beginning to feel the heat it's a very restless and comfortable environment for us but you needed to know this because it says when the branch is yet tender you know that the summer is nigh so it is a preparation of the mind you see the battle armageddon is the battle in the mind it is a battle of the mind it is to whom you obey to whom you obey if you obey god follow god if you obey the world you follow the world if I put this in the current language if you obey God be compliance with God if you obey the world be compliance with the world I think compliance now is very common common English for us yeah, we comply compliance to anything whatever the workplace requires you to do you better comply otherwise you lost your job so this is the situations where we are in and so let's do the work of preparation because we will say goodbye to this planet earth we will say goodbye I have said my goodbye to this planet earth already if you if you have not done it yet you make a plan you start preparing to say goodbye to this planet earth okay? because I have done mine I, I uh, we I already said goodbye I I have no pleasure no longer in this in this world I've said goodbye to this world has no good future no good ending and so the summer is nine in verse 33 so likewise ye <coughs> when ye shall see <coughs> excuse me you see you have the the visibility when ye shall see 
all these things. So in so here is the this is the time of trouble. You have here the the wicked. You had the wicked uh, resurrected. Here you have Satan appears as angel of light. Here you have the the role of the immortality of the soul playing in this area in, in this in this time. So this now <clears throat> The time of trouble began when the universal Sunday law is implemented. You get it? Universal, universal Sunday law is implemented. The beginning of the time of trouble. And then, here in verse 32, so likewise, when you see all these things, so when you see all these things, including the famine, the pestilences, the earthquakes, and also here would be the seven plagues. The seven curses, the seven plagues. All in this time, all in this time. And then also Jesus will come. During the time of trouble, Jesus will come. But Jesus is ultimately the end part of it. Satan first will come as a counterfeit, as a deception. Immortality of the soul will play a big role as well. And also the spiritualism. Spiritualism will play a big role in Jesus' coming. So, what, what are the tools that spiritualism is used? How do you know that you're not a victim of spiritualism? What are the platforms they're using? Media. Media. What is, what is media? This is what we're using now. What is the what is the singular form of media? Because this is plural. That's correct. What is a medium? <coughs> when you go internet, do you connect? Wi-Fi. We are playing with spiritualism. Do you watch, do you watch <coughs> what channel? Do you know, do you know what's a, do you know what's a, do you know what a channel means? Do you know what does it mean, a channel? The one that can bring you to It's a channel. It's a channel. The world is using language of spiritualism. Unfortunately, all of us are hooked and we don't know. But we don't know. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. Now you know. <clears throat> Let us remember, let us remember that to restore in man the image of God. To restore that image of God, none of this media should be found at home or at church.
that's why the Bible says it's a long summer heat because we have to say goodbye we have to say goodbye to all of this in this life the reason the, the, on, the only purpose of this immortality of the soul teaching and the spiritualism teaching so that we will not remember the work of preparation to restore in man the image of God. And Satan is giving all this, especially with sports. It is a media. It is part of the medium. There is a work of preparation. And so the parable of the fig tree gives us the idea give us the idea that let's do now the work of preparation because it says so likewise ye that means you and me so likewise when you see all these things know that it is near even at the door where is the door of the sanctuary I think we I think in our next study we will study sanctuary yeah our next session <clears throat> right here at the entrance on the eastern side and Jesus is right on the other end on the western side where the Ark of the Covenant where is the most holy place now Jesus has to leave the most holy place walk back towards the east that's why when Jesus comes, He will come from the east. When you see the eastern sky, when you see as a lightning from the east to the west, because when Jesus comes, He will come from the east. Because at the moment He is in the west, which is the most holy place. He will walk from there towards the east, even at the door. And when He is at the door, He will come to His people in the camp living around the sanctuary so next subject we will talk about the sanctuary because the bible say learn from the parable of the fig tree what have we learned thus far from the parable of the fig tree nation israel will play a role before jesus coming within this time frame of the time of trouble especially when there is a resurrection of the wicked on that special resurrection because Caiaphas is one of them and Caiaphas was the high priest so when they are planning of something building the third temple is actually preparing us to know that Jesus is coming very soon Whatever Satan is doing is for us to learn that Jesus is coming. And not what he does, but what Jesus does. So this is the deception that Satan is playing. Satan is deceiving the people that when what he does, we look at him. No, we are not. We don't look at him. We look at what Jesus did. So whatever he does is telling us that Jesus is in the most holy place and is coming back very soon this is the parable of the fig tree and when we go to the very long summer heat it's gonna be the long summer is beginning on the Passover and it will finish on the Pentecost so that's about 50 days 50 years oh no no it's 49 7 times 7 49 49 days so all, two months two months of a long summer so it's a it's a long summer and there would be an early rain and there would be a lighter rain 
that happens on the summer time the rain is required for that summer so the fig tree that we learn is that there would be a first drop of the Holy Spirit which is the early rain and then there would be in that long summer it doesn't mean there is no rain there is still a little bit of rain but it's not as much on the last later rain because that one big rain will prepare for the wheat for the harvest so the Holy Spirit will be poured out one last time and as soon as the Holy Spirit is poured out one last chance one last time and then the Holy Spirit will be withdrawn from the earth and the wicked will be more wicked because there is no more Holy Spirit they had no more guilty conscience that's why when the death penalty to those who will not comply with the universal Sunday law because the Holy Spirit has been taken off them God, Satan had them full control their wickedness is to the full that's why it's called time of trouble but actually it's not a trouble for us it's a trouble for them this time of trouble is a time of trouble for the wicked why they have the seven plagues they are more troubled than us actually we are not in trouble so the time of trouble is not a trouble for God's people, God's people that do what? That do the preparation. And that preparation is the restoring of God's image in man. When we do that, we are not in trouble. They are in trouble. Those are not working a work of preparation and those who did not restore the image of God in themselves they are in big trouble big trouble <clears throat> but to those who do the preparation meaning restoring the image of God in man now not in trouble we are not in trouble it appears to be in trouble but we are not our trouble only at the very beginning okay so i'll give you an example during the pandemic only a few of us are in trouble but not everybody so maybe not exactly but it will still be the same when the time of sunday law is implemented at the moment, it's only a health issue regarding the, shot, the, vaccine, the, the jab. What? But one day, when this universal Sunday law is implemented, it is far more than, than what we have now. There's only an exercise, only a warm-up game. The main event is when the universal Sunday law. But we're not even worried about it. Because if we are doing today, if we start now, the restoration of God's image in you and in me when we start doing the work of preparation nothing God promised no diseases of Egypt will come to your camp Psalms 91 a thousand shall fall by the side and a thousand shall fall by the right hand side but it will not come nigh thee you will walk on top of the, of the other you will not be set by the by the the creation of the of the fowler. You you will not you you will not be part of that big uh, catastrophe disaster that the wicked are suffering because we have put our trust in Jesus. We do the work of preparation. This is the parable of the fig tree. The parable of the fig tree is a work of preparation 
that there would be a long summer. But at the beginning of the summer, there is a Holy Spirit, the first rain. And at the end of the summer, no matter how, how, how hot, how, how heated may be our experience, there is the Holy Spirit that will go with us. And then ultimately, the Holy Spirit will be poured out to proclaim the three angels' messages, especially the third one. And then we can tell the people, come out of her, my people. Do not join, do not participate in, in, in her plagues, no one of her sins. Come out of her, my people. Because the Holy Spirit will tell you where to preach, what to preach, to whom to be in touch with. It is the Holy Spirit that will guide us. And we are not in trouble. The wicked will be in trouble. This time of trouble is for the wicked. If we will not do the restoration of God's image in man, we are part of that time of trouble. We will suffer that time of trouble. Okay, so Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Because this time of trouble is not yours. It's not yours. It's for those who are not doing the work of preparation. All right. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise and thank you for the parable of the fig tree. Even though we have only a short period of time, but we just thank you that we have enough to learn and to understand. And Lord, we will study more in our own time, in our own pleasure about your word by understanding that you are a God who had promised us that you will never leave us nor forsake us that you have prepared a place for us. And when that place is ready, you will come again. And also, Lord, in this time of the work of preparation, we pray that please, Lord, give us the power of your Holy Spirit so that the, the image of God will be restored in me and in all of us here so that they will see not myself, not ourselves, but it is you that is living in us. So forgive us now, Lord, from all our sins. Receive us as your children. And thank you for the many answered prayers. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.